has particularly spread around the world where there is no cadaveric organ donation, where the need is great for, um, for uh, donor organs and the families now are stepping forward in the Asian countries and to donate parts of the livers, kidneys and so forth. It's not enough. I think the, uh, the countries there do have to have an obligation to provide cadaveric as well, but at the moment they're doing quite well and have really optimize this uh, procedure uh, to uh, their needs, which is fantastic, actually. Mm -hmm. it, it seems as though this, this procedure is as relevant as ever, as needed as ever, uh, given the, the demand for, for these I types of I think it, it got its place, uh, uh, whereas it might have been uh, somewhat overestimated, but it has its place now, and uh, um, the, the safeguards around, as far as the safety of the donor is concerned, and the uh, compliance that is required and the uh, informed consent and the institutional uh, strengths uh, parameters, they all outlined and uh, so this is why I think some institutions should focus on this, not everybody should do it again, you know, because uh, maybe a few hundred cases will be done in the States or maybe even a thousand, but uh, they have to be extremely careful and in an open fashion and uh, uh, so um, I would think the part would be in the range of 15-20% of transplants, livers at least, could be from life donors. And what is it now, currently? Uh, it's, I think it's less by now. It's, it's 400, about 5,000. It's less than 10% at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I think there's still an increase in that.